Norfolk Southern has been installing continuous welded rail for more than 30 years. As a result of this activity, we now have over 15,000 track miles of continuous welded rail throughout our system. While continuous welded rail has eliminated many traditional railroad maintenance problems, it has also presented new track maintenance challenges. Clearly, the advantage of CWR over traditional railroad track is the reduction of track joints. Unfortunately, it is often necessary to introduce joints into CWR during both installation and maintenance, even though rail joints are high maintenance areas. In order to gain full benefits from CWR, the joints should be eliminated by field welding as soon as possible. Thermite welding is one of the processes Norfolk Southern uses to eliminate joints in CWR. Thermite welding joins rail ends with molten metal poured into a mold which encloses a gap between the rail ends. After the metal has sufficiently cooled, the weld head is ground to match the rail section in the track. NS welding crews make thousands of thermite wells every year. Therefore, quality thermite wells are a key component of our successful track maintenance operation. As with any other Norfolk Southern job, thermite welding starts with safety. Only after you are properly qualified are you permitted to perform thermite welding. You must follow all applicable job procedures and safety rules. Start each day with warm-up exercises and use proper lifting techniques when handling tools and materials. Before beginning the welding operation, make sure that all employees have a clear understanding of what is to be done. All applicable NS safety rules and job procedures should be thoroughly explained to employees who do not regularly work with a welding crew. In addition, all NS thermite welders should be completely familiar with MWNS standard procedure 425, which covers the thermite welding process. Each welding crew is furnished a specially equipped welding vehicle. The driver of this vehicle must have a commercial driver's license. He must ensure that all applicable DOT regulations are observed, including such things as filling out inspection forms and making out driver logs when necessary. Inspect your vehicle each day before work. Check fluid levels, lights, signals, and tires. Make sure that all additional equipment, such as cranes, is functioning properly. Be sure you have all the personal protective equipment, tools, and supplies necessary for the day's work. In addition to hard hats, safety glasses, gloves, and work boots, a thermite welder needs shade 5 tinted safety glasses while cutting rail and observing the thermite process and additional face protection while grinding. Inspect all oxygen torch fuel equipment before using it. Make certain that each torch hose and regulator is equipped with an approved reverse flow check valve. All oxygen torch hoses in service must be tested for leaks every 30 calendar days and a tag which shows the date of the test and the name of the individual who performed the test must be attached to the regulator end of the hose. Oxygen and propane tanks must be stored and secured in an upright position. This is Tom Welder Brown of New River Dispatcher, Roland Cove. Dispatcher answering Brown, over. Yes, sir, I'd like to get some time. If I could. The first Thank order you. of business upon arriving at the job site is to obtain proper protection before fouling any track. When thermite welding in signal territory, use a shunt where practical to provide backup track protection. Several precautions must be observed before making any thermite weld. Five or six hole joints in the main line must be plugged. 
Bolt holes must not be closer than six inches from the rail end in mainline rail sections of 100 pounds or heavier. 90 pound or lighter rail with four hole joints may be thermite welded if no cracks or visible defects are observed in the rail ends or bolt holes. Thermite wells must not be made closer than three feet from an existing standard thermite well, 10 feet from a compromised thermite weld, or 18 inches from a plant weld. Furthermore, any rail ends which have been built up by welding must not be thermite welded. After observing the preceding preliminary precautions, it is time to unload your equipment, tools, and supplies. This material primarily consists of propane torches, weld crucible, weld molds, mold shoes, looting material, slag pans, universal clamp, hydraulic weld shear, and a grinder. Norfolk Southern standard procedures require the use of zirconium wash in the mold collar area. This wash helps prevent pitting and produces a cleaner weld. If your thermite molds do not have factory applied zirconium wash in the mold collar area, you must apply the wash in the field. Use a small paintbrush and apply enough coats so that no sand pores are visible. Do not coat more molds than you intend to use that day. Next, prepare a proper gap between the rail ends. Make certain that care is taken to produce a straight, square cut by use of a cutting guide. Thermite welding requires a 1 inch to 1 and 1 16th inch gap at the time the weld is made. The gap is measured with the gap measuring gauge. This gap is usually created by torch cutting the rail ends. Proper rail end condition is critical to producing a quality thermite weld. After the rail ends have been torch cut, clean the slag and smooth the torch cut ends with a grinder. If you are working on a joint, use the slot grinder. If you're working on a plug, use the one inch grinder. Always use proper protective equipment when grinding. If you are installing a plug, plug lengths should be at least six feet in tangent track, 11 feet in curves up to four degrees, and 19 and a half feet in curves four degrees or more. When removing defective thermite wells or plant wells in track, cut at least nine inches from the center line of the defective thermite weld and at least 12 inches from the center line of the defective plant weld. Use a circular or double bristle wire brush wheel on the grinder to clean both sides of the rail approximately four inches back from the end. Any raised numbers or letters in the mold contact area must be ground flush with the web of the rail. After the rail ends have been prepared for welding, they must be properly aligned both vertically and horizontally. This is a critical part of the thermite welding process. If the rail ends were not properly lined up prior to welding, the finished weld could create a surface or alignment irregularity in the track. Use a 36 inch straight edge to set the weld crown. The crown should be 1 16th inch at each end of the straight edge. After setting the crown, use a 12 or 18 inch straight edge to check alignment at the base and web. Do not attempt to make a standard thermite weld if the height difference between the rails to be welded exceeds a quarter inch. After the rail ends are properly lined up, install the universal clamp and recheck the weld gap using a gap gauge. The next step is to install the thermite weld mold and the mold shoes. 
Proper mold fit up is extremely important. A tight mold fit is essential, so check to see that the molds are tight against the rail. If not, rub or file the molds as necessary in order to ensure proper fit. However, excessive filing of molds should be avoided. Pay particular attention to the head and base fillet areas. Where mold fit up is not tight, use pot paste to fill in the gaps. After the proper mold fit has been obtained, clamp on the mold shoes, check for gaps, and make adjustments if necessary. Use three-fold paper on top of the rail heads and cardboard on top of the molds to help keep sand from entering the mold cavity. The outside of the molds must then be packed with premixed looting material to prevent molten metal from running through. Attach the slag pans to the lugs on the rear of the mold shoes after the mold preparation is complete. Then, place a railhead protecting sheet between the mold shoe and the universal clamp and on the opposite side of the mold shoe. Dry the slag pans with a soft flame to prevent molten weld metal from coming into contact with moisture. Also, Leave a layer of sand or looting material in the bottom of the slag pans to help prevent warping. The thermite crucibles used by Norfolk Southern are designed to last for at least 30 wells, but 35 to 40 wells are possible if the welder takes proper care of the crucible. Always dry the crucible before use by heating the interior with a soft flame for at least 10 minutes. After 15 wells, and again after 30 wells, all slag should be cleaned from the crucible. Any cracks detected during cleaning should be repaired with crucible paste. The crucible should be dried thoroughly after repairs. Never use a crucible after the metal ring in the bottom becomes visible. And never use a crucible that exhibits a hot spot. Place the complete crucible assembly on the tripod and align it so that the bottom of the crucible shell is approximately one inch above the top of the mold and centered over the mold. After these steps have been completed, open the oxygen valve on the torch stem to blow any loose sand out of the mold cavity. Next, install the tapping thimble and plugging sand. Shake the weld portion to assure a homogeneous mixture and slowly pour the weld portion into the center of the crucible. Prior to making a thermite weld, the rail ends must be preheated by inserting the preheater torch into the mold. Failure to do so will produce a defective weld. Next, preheat the mold plug by holding it with fire tongs in the flame exiting the mold risers. If the plug turns white, it has been overheated. Preheat times vary according to weld type, rail section, and weather conditions. Torch types, preheat times, torch heights, oxygen and propane pressure settings, and flame heights are listed in standard procedure 425. After the rail ends have been preheated for the minimum time specified, visually check them to determine if they have been properly preheated. If so, you will observe good orange-yellow color entirely covering both rail ends. Always use a stopwatch to verify all times and make sure you use Shade 5 tinted safety glasses when observing rail ends during the preheating process. Insert the mold plug and swing the crucible into position over the mold. Within 15 seconds after removing the preheat torch, light the igniter and stick it into the center of the weld portion. 
it is important that the igniter be inserted in the center of the weld portion. In 15 to 28 seconds, the reaction will settle down, the self-tapping thimble will open, and molten metal will flow into the molds. During the pour and the subsequent three-minute cool-down time, it is very critical that the weld not be disturbed in any way. Do not bump the rail, ties, or welding fixtures or cause any vibration in the area during this time. If these precautions are not observed, the weld may be defective. If the rail temperature reads less than 50 degrees Fahrenheit, or if a severe climatic change occurs during this part of the thermite welding process, the rail on each side of the weld must be post-heated in order to help prevent sudden contraction which might damage the cooling weld. Use the preheat torch to lightly heat the rail head and base across a three-foot distance on either side of the weld. After three minutes, you may remove the crucible and the slag pans. Four minutes after the well pour, remove the universal clamp and mold shoes. After five minutes, push back the top of the mold to check the well metal for solidification. If the metal has not solidified, wait a short time before proceeding. When the metal has solidified, use a hydraulic weld shear to remove excess metal and mold material. If you're installing a plug and have sufficient track time to make another weld, leave the head and risers in place and move to the other end of the plug. This will allow the completed weld time to cool down. Leave the wedges used to align the rail in place for at least 20 minutes or until the weld metal has cooled to 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, grind the rail head to contour. When grinding, always wear safety glasses protected by either a full face shield or mono goggles. Use a straight edge to make sure that the weld is not over ground. Do not leave any sharp corners. Evenly grind the top of the base where the foot risers were removed. Use a wire brush wheel to clean away any remaining sand from the collar area. If light fins are present, it is permissible to lightly pry them up and break them off with a chisel while being careful not to scar the weld collar. If heavy fins and or pits are present, the weld collar must be profile ground. A finished thermite weld should have a smooth collar with no pits or fins. Take care not to exert excessive pressure and overheat the rail during grinding. Final grinding passes must be light and polishing in nature. Leave a slight crown on the hot weld to assure a flat running surface after the weld has cooled. After the thermite weld has been completed, the track must be re-spiked and re-anchored in accordance with applicable standards. The ties on each side of the weld should be double spiked. A thermite weld should not be left permanently on top of a cross tie. Any welds which were made on ties should be reported to line maintenance in order for the ties to be re-spaced. Never leave a tie plate under a thermite weld. No job is complete until the job site is cleaned up. Load up all tools and materials. Pick up and properly dispose of all scrap metal and thermite welding debris. The thermite welder must visually inspect each finished weld. Any obviously defective welds must be immediately plug repaired. If it is not possible to immediately install a plug, contour grind the weld, apply joint bars and issue a slow order. Joint bars are not a permanent repair. Thermite wells handled in this manner must be plugged as soon as possible. After the thermite weld has passed the welder's visual inspection, the welder will stamp the weld on the field side of the rail. The 
weld will then be ultrasonically inspected by the welding supervisor or other designated employee who will then stamp the weld on the opposite side from the welder's stamp. The last step of thermite welding is the proper completion of the necessary reports. Weld production must be recorded daily on NS Form 11277. Hello, Pat. This is David Day on the ARN. How are you today? All right, thanks. If you're ready, I have a little thermite welding report for you. I'm ready. Thermite Weld Gang 21, Virginia Division, mile post N275 to N276. Time work 6 to 4.30, 10 hours. AFN In addition, weld production must also be called in daily to the process engineer's office in Atlanta, Georgia. Although thermite welding is a complex process, it can be performed safely and efficiently if the proper procedures are carefully followed. Thermite wells are a critical part of the track structure, and every defective weld represents a potential derailment. It is imperative that quality control measures are carefully followed in every step of the thermite welding process. Remember that a thermite welder's performance not only affects his own safety, but it also affects the safety of train crews and the general public. The Norfolk Southern team believes that no job is so important, no service is so urgent that we cannot take the time to perform our work safely. You are part of the team. Our continued success depends on you.